Hi guys, uh, this is the second session for the winter seminar. My name is Vicente Bolea, and in this session we will talk about GitHub and Git, uh, particularly GitHub developing a stack. So following the same name convention as in the last seminar, I normally refer uh, as a developing a stack as set of different tools that you use to work together and to get the work done. So this time it's not about coding, it's mostly about how to collaborate with uh, your peers, your classmates, your lab mates. Once again, uh, this seminar, it's uh, the audience, it's mostly, I mean, I made it for uni students However, everyone can actually watch it. And then if you find it useful, um, we'll be very happy with that. So just one more thing. I'm not, I'm not an expert in coding or programming. Well, I'm not sure if I am or not, but probably not. I'm just someone who happened to use those tools for a long time. So. I just give my idea as a an user and I don't have any authority. So whatever I say, it's mostly what I got to know as an user. I hope you find it uh, useful. So first, the motivation for this presentation is, uh, so all these tools, uh, they will provide you a way of make easier you the way you work and to help you to collaborate as i said and well not less important as a coder as a programmer you need to have a portfolio a public for portfolio so that uh, other universities other companies they can actually see what you have done and then you can build your brand name. It's actually such a good thing that you can do, right? So these tools will help you with that as well. And yeah, and then uh, lastly, uh, it's very focused on open source projects. It doesn't have to be uh, everything about open source, but it's very related because you make your code public and that's the whole point. <clears throat> So the scope of this presentation, uh, we're going to cover Git, uh, which is the actually the command, the tool, the software that we use. And then GitHub, which is a company which provides a service uh, for free. Many of the services are for free. So you can use your Git software with that company. I will explain how it works in detail. And then uh, third one, Slack. So a Slack is like a chatting, um, messenger, some sort of like a, a, how should I call it, like a messenger tool. So it's uh, you can make your room and then you can chat with your coworkers. And it's totally integrated with all the other tools. So it can be quite useful. Uh, fourth part is uh, about Travis continuous integration, which complement GitHub some of the features that GitHub is missing. And lastly, it's uh, ZenHub. So it's also another tool, online tool, which uh, complements also other features that GitHub is missing. So this one is my selection. This is what I use, and this is what I know. So there is way more tool, uh, tools, let's call it like that, out there, but I didn't get to know in detail. So I just want to cover what I exactly know. <clears throat> so uh, we start with Git. So what is Git? Uh, so Git is a uh, versioning software as any other. But it's a little bit different. And the way that it's different uh, is that uh, it's decentralized. So in previous uh, versioning software, 
let's say if you don't have internet, uh, you could not uh, make, I mean, you, you cannot use it in a very high level or you cannot totally use it. And the other part is that uh, branching, which is a very important feature for working with many people, it was poorly supported by previous uh, versioning softwares. So interestingly, uh, Git was created by, I'm not sure if it's totally created, but mostly created by uh, Linus Tolvar, uh, the guy, great guy. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I didn't meet him personally, but well, he did a great job. And he's famous for making the Linux and among others. And he basically coded or came up with the idea, I don't know if he actually coded, of this sort of Git software because for his developing, his development, he was missing some features. So, well, so that's a comparing to other version in software. So the idea of Git is that there's many people to work in the same source code and then help you to combine, which is actually the big thing, right? And the other part is that as any other version in software, you can always backtrack in the code. So if you implemented one feature and that feature has a bug, very serious one, then you can go to the previous week version of your code, very simply, and then you don't have the bug, you don't also have the feature, but well, if uh, security and stability is important, maybe you need it. And lastly, uh, it's very easy to set up and you will see how, and you can extend it. There are many plugins, so yeah, it's, uh, you can, customize it. You can make it the, to work the way you want it to work. So I want to start with, uh, let's call it a mini tutorial and how to set up a Git project. So I have a command line here and I'm going to make a directory, my Git project. I enter there and Let's get started. So the, the very first comment, it's uh, to initialize this Git uh, project. So it's simple as this one, that's all. So now we running, I mean, well, I in my prompt, I have some information that you might not have it. So this information is related to the Git, but you can ignore it at this moment. We will cover about this in other seminars. How can you customize your command line, which is pretty, <laughs> pretty good because if you use it every day, you want to make it uh, in your way so that I can help you. So we initialize this Git repository. Now it's empty. So now let's make our source code. We have this main CPP file and well, let's write something inside. In. Uh, that's it. <laughs> so we now added to our repository, our repository, our projects, because now we are working locally. It's only in the folder where Git is working. And now we made our very first commit. First commit. I, I, I like to write always like a beginning of the life. Live. That sounds cool. <laughs> oh yeah, here we are. So if we check the log, you can see that we get one commit. And then now sometime later we say, okay, this main file does nothing. So let's make it do something. So we include iostream header. Uh, maybe yeah, name, name space. Let's use the standard name space, and let's see out feature one. Yeah, we just implemented the first feature for our Git project. So now it's different. I mean, now I got this message. You're not gonna get it, but basically, if you run 
git status, you get that uh, you actually modify this file. And then if you want to see what did you modify, you can run git diff, and then it shows you a difference. Very neat. So I, I want to add this thing to my project. So again, git add the name of the file. Now, if I do a status, now it's saying, OK, I added. So do you want to make the commit? So before that, it didn't say it was not stage. But well, we can ignore that part for now. But anyways, so we added, and now we commit. And a very fast thing. <laughs> so <clears throat> we feature one is implemented in these commits. Yeah, here we go. So now if we see the log, we got the we have our first version and we have our second version. It's good. So if we want to uh, upload to GitHub, we're going to cover later. So we will actually issue this comment, git push. But we need to set up some things before. So I want to talk first about GitHub before I explain about this part. But as you have seen, with these very few comments, git init, you only do once. Git add and git commit, you do whenever you want to make a commit. So you can keep different versions of your files and so that you can come back anytime later to the previous version. So you will not need any more something like a main version one or maybe inside the main, like, a, oh, I, no, I, I want to comment this one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then now I say, OK, nice feature too. So you you can forget about this one. And lastly, uh, well, we, will call it later. we will cover later. So very simple, very easy. Here you go. So let's talk a little bit more. It's now synchronized with master. So, well, let's go. So our master is on GitHub. So before I go to this part, so I will talk about GitHub first. So now you got what is Git, roughly, approximately. So about GitHub. So GitHub, it's uh, maybe we can refer as uh, the social network for coders. And I think it's a very good description, or maybe the social network for code itself. Because you don't get to talk with people there that much, but you get your code to be as in the social media to be always like a share or uh well incremented. So so yeah there is it. So Git it's a common line tool. But then GitHub it gives you this nice in web interface. And then it adds more features that is actually missing. So it's very focused on making more uh, something you can collaborate. And it's help you to build your portfolio. So <clears throat> here, so as I explained before, you can actually do many things there. It expand the Git features, but Still, it's missing some some other features and things that you might want to use. So that's why you need to complement it with other software. So let me show you about GitHub. So this is my the home page for my account. So at this moment, I I have my account, and then I have the account for my laboratory in South Korea. So in my projects, I have few of them. So maybe we can go to, let's go to one of the most, the one that I work the most, almost every day. Let's go to this one, Velox DFS. So 
you get this image. So these ones are the files, and these ones are the folders within the files. And the readme file that you normally have in your projects, actually, it's uh, it's rendered, so you get this very nice thing. <clears throat> You also get something that you can watch repositories, you can add stars, and you can fork. We will come back later to the fork thing. So it registers all the commits you made. You already know what is a commit. So you can see like a, but too many commits. <laughs> many, many of them. And branches, you can be released. You can see everyone who work here how much did they work, when in at which time they worked the most. And then you can see, yeah, there are many things you can, I mean, it complements, it adds new things, right? And it has very cool features like a pull request. So these are our branches. We're going to come back to this one later. But basically what it does is for example, if I want to add something, there was a bug in my code. This feature called DFS put was actually a uh, very, they has a sm some bug that it makes the whole system to crash, so not actually crash, to hang for a long time. And so I, I assume the task to fix it, and then I implement the task. And now using this pull request, I propose to the whole project to integrate the change I made. So for my lab mates, this guy, Tukyung, he reviewed my code. So basically what he did is like, he went to this tab and then he said, okay, so you add something here and then you add this file and then you add this other one file and then these modifications and this one and you chain this one you add some comments that's good <laughs> and yeah that's it there's many changes right and then many times he will do like this like a hey do you why do you chain this and then i get the same message in that in the in this line and then I will reply, oh, I changed it because I had to do this one. And then maybe he was right. And then I make another comment and then uh, rechange it to what he said before. So that's how it really works. And it's really good because you make sure that in everything that you put into the main, I mean, let's say to the main branch at the in GitHub, it has been peer reviewed and it has been checked by other um, teammates. So, so yeah, that's it for this feature. And then this other one feature is called issues. It's pretty descript descriptive. So basically, you can open one question, you found a bug, or I don't know many things. In the labels, maybe you can get some idea of what's. <clears throat> so yeah, that, that, that's for the repository support. But then uh, also, for example, for your accounts, talking about the showing off thing, making your portfolio, you get a profile. And in your profile, you show how much you have work the you can put some projects so people when they go to your profile they get this picture and then they can see your the the projects that you have work that you want them to see and yeah you, you got this timeline so they can see more or less in which thing have you have been working so far lately and as a twitter you got a followers I don't have much and you have uh, people you're following and the people you're following whenever they they add something to their code open a new project you get this uh new feed and then you can see what's going on so this one is for gits i think that's i mostly cover 
most of the thing. So uh, there is something important that I want to say. So as I said before, I'm focusing this presentation for UNIST students, uh, undergrads mostly, but also graduate students. So GitHub gives you many free tools for free as long as you are a student. So it's very nice thing and I'll show you. So I think the developing yeah, that's it. <laughs> so you get all these tools and actually every sometime they add even more things. So for free you get uh this one and the Amazon Web Service Educate program, which is actually pretty nice. And I'm not sure about this one. And you got 50 bucks for, uh, they call it droplets. So it's a virtual machine in digital OCR. So I use it and actually for almost two years, I got a free virtual machine, which was always on. And then, uh, DNS plan. In GitHub, you actually get this one, which is nice. I mean, it's not much money, but it helps you out. You got this Git Kraken, I haven't tried. I really want to try. And name chip, name chip, sorry. Uh, so you get a free domain. I think it's that me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And one year SSL certificates. And this one is nice. <laughs> and then lastly, the Travis that we're gonna use. Eh? It's it's good. It's gonna help you out for private bills, anyways. So it's free. You can use it. It's very good tools. And yeah, they give you right away as long as your email has the name of one university. The domain of the email belongs to a university, or it end with that edu, like education, then you will get it. <clears throat> so coming back to our presentation. So, well, we already talked about GitHub. So now I'll go back to this mini tutorial. So the second part was about talking with the master. So even though GitHub is decentralized uh, in the minimum stage, somehow, it, it can also have a master. And the master is important. It can have many masters, actually. So normally the master is GitHub itself. So if I want to make a new repository, it's very easy, new repository right here. And then this one is a winter seminar. And then I'm going to make it private. So yeah, here. There is it. So you already get the instructions here. So I want to do this one. <laughs> well, I want to do this one. Sorry. I mean, the same thing. Yeah. And then keep push. I don't know why I need you, but okay. Let me make a mistake first, and then I got to know, I got to know why. Normally with this it works. Ah, oh yeah, it works. So what do we have here now? Yeah, we got our main with the feature one, and then we got our two commits. We got everything. So let's say that now I'm a I'm another person. I'm not the person who pushed this one here. And I want to implement feature two. But while I'm doing that, maybe another person wants to implement feature three. So how can I somehow implement my feature two and then not to modify this master code? So, so far, our project looked like this. 
Oh, well, I forgot about this uh, graph. It's super useful. So it looks like this. So if I keep pushing here, maybe other person who implement feature tree will start from another version. So, well, what if I can make a branch? So yeah, I can make it. So I make a branch like this. So first I see how many branches, no branch. And now I make the first branch, check out B, feature two. So now I'm in the branch two and I implement feature two. Oh, that was a very easy feature. <laughs> I wish real features were like that. So I implement, I add my changes, I made a commit feature to implement, and I push to origin feature two. So in here, now we're gonna get, yeah. So now I have two branches, feature one and feature two. I mean the master and the feature two. So if I want to add to master, I will do this one. I make a pull request. I create it. And now I have this one here. So git say, oh, there is no conflict, you can merge. So by merging means that uh, my feature tool will go after the previous master commits. So we can say, we can see the change in the file and now I merge it. I can delete the branch. You don't need it anymore, right? So now my main, it will look like, like this feature tool. And then, importantly, now I got four commits. And why four? Because there was the commit I made right now. There was the one I made it before. But it has to create a merge commit. And the reason because it created is to make it the code, I mean, the graph of the history, to make it look um, easy to track. And you will see why. If we go to the, gra the graphs and network tab, it looks like this. So this pattern is actually very, so it's a standard in when you're using Git. I'm not sure about other software. So the idea is that uh, the master only advance to a new commit by a pull request or uh, more technically a uh, merge commit. So if you follow this pattern, you're gonna get rid of many headaches. And I totally recommend it. So it's out of the scope to explain you the reason why, but it's what it does. So the name of this pattern, it's called git flow. And there's many things about this git flow. You can find many information out there. So, well, for example, this one. <laughs> I'm not sure if we got there. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, it's a very well known Git, uh, Git workflow, which uh, enables uh, to manage using a very few guidelines. It lets you to, to manage a comp complex uh, project with many people or like few people, whatever. And it's very simple and it makes a lot of sense if you go through. So I totally recommend it to use it. From the real beginning, actually these uh, tutorials from the Atlassian, uh, they're really nice. It really helped me to get to know. And, and it's really fun because <laughs> Atlassian are the competitors of GitHub actually. <laughs> but their documentation is really nice. And so I 
if you have some questions about Git, maybe it will help you a lot. Just look at this. It's really good. So I think that that's all for GitHub, I think. Let me check the time. OK, 30 minutes. That's fine. So so yeah, that's it. And you got these keys, which is uh, a small source code you want to back up. For example, I got this. <laughs> Let me show. Well, so yeah, small call like I don't know status bar in C. If you want to make it using those weird characters, like go back and <laughs> and yeah, there are many things. Uh, binary to stream. Another one. Yeah. So yeah, I think that. That's it. It's pretty much. Also, if you can add me, if you can follow me in GitHub, it's really good. I might send you cookies. Uh, I mean, not to everyone. <laughs> I will get poor. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's it. Okay, so that was about the branches. We already talked about this one. And okay, next part, a Slack. So we briefly mentioned about this Slack thing. So yeah, it's uh, so in GitHub there is no chat, there is no way to talking with people. I cannot even send a message to other person. So well, you need that thing, right? You guys are working together. You guys need to talk, and well, you can go to Facebook or you can go to use some app like WhatsApp or Kakao Talk if you're in Korea, Line if you're in Japan. So Slack come with this idea of making this uh, chatting web app and app service for developers. And it's not only developers, it's actually for many people who work with computers, I would say. So it looks like this. I will show you the Slack page of my team. I must say that we don't use many features there. So we had these few chats rooms. And then we put some files that we need. And and yeah, it's uh you can talk to the people. You can call them. And it's the thing you can do, actually. So yeah, it's a chat, but then you can have files there. And it's integrated with many things. So you can see the integrations. <clears throat> so in my case, I, well, yeah, I have this one. So for GitHub, whenever someone make a commit or pull request or issue or something similar, we got notified all of us. From Google Calendar, there is some events we cannot miss it, so we get a message from there. Hangouts, sometimes we are in the chat room and then we want to make a video conference from there so everyone can join easily. Simple pull, it's obvious. And then this Travis continuous integration, it's good, you're gonna find out why. And then the clicky, clicky, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a simple thing that uh, it's not important. So yeah, that's how it works. Uh, if I go to my DICL, so we had this GitHub log. So all those integrations, they throw a message there all the time, like this. Like that's like the build pass. Someone made a pull request, someone closes, someone review it. Yeah, like that. So it's pretty nice and it's free. I, I, it's limited to 10 integrations, which is actually quite a lot. And then you can make it private. Our case is private because we are laboratory. So, but you can make it public as well. And 
And well, if you have open source projects, it's very helpful. So the maintainers, they can talk through there and they can share ideas. They can make a video conference, call each other, Google Calendar. Well, it's uh, many, many choices. So there is more thing about this software, but we don't have to talk. Well, it's out of the topic to go too much into detail. Just one more thing. They have the app for um, iPhone, Android, and they also have our some sort of like client for Linux and Windows. But as I hear, it's same thing as the website. I mean, the web app. So I'm not sure if it's worth it to install it. I didn't do it. I just use Chrome. It's easy. I have all the extension. Uh, it's, I'm fine with that. And at the same time, I use a Chromebook. So, well, I want to use all the computers in the same way. So yeah, that's for the Slack. And then next one, Zen Hub. So this one, it's interesting. I'm not sure if you know or if you like to manage projects, but in my case, I happen to like it. So in my college, in college, I, I studied double major, uh, computer science, engineering, and entrepreneurship, uh, like business overall, like what people might call. It has a very low name, but so, I mean, it was an introduction to many aspects about management and investment, finance, operation management. And in that operation management, uh, I got to know about this project management thing, and it was not easy. It was interesting. I would have thrown more time there if I had it, but it was interesting. But still, uh, well, I happen to be more focused on computer science at this very moment of my life. So I don't want to learn. I don't want, well, I want to learn, but I need to be efficient. I need to do things on time. So I need some technique framework and some tool which makes, makes me manage my project very easily, very simply and efficient. And it, it actually works. So that's where Agile somehow came to, came to me. And then I read about it. I read a few books about it, uh, many video tutorials, many things. And I got the idea. And then there were many tools out there. So I, I compare many of them, uh, like Jira. Uh, I forgot the other one. Uh, Anyways, I, I, I check a few of them and I got to, I found the Zen Hub to be the most, the easier one, the easiest one to use, totally integrated in GitHub, very easy to learn. My teammates, they learn very quickly and ef effective, it just works. It doesn't have many things, but it makes it work. So, so here's the thing. So, well, this is our personal, for one of our projects, we had this board. And so well, I should say that at this moment, we are very kind of vacation. So we're not really using that much. So we had this thing. So that, that's what SendHub provides. Into GitHub, you get this tab if you sign up for them. At the same time, if you are a student or if you are a laboratory, I mean, if you are in university somehow, you get for free for private uh, repositories. Otherwise, you have to pay, but it's not much. I think it's like a five bucks per user per month. So you get these uh, pipelines, how they call it. So in my case, I put issues here, tasks, ideas, questions. That's uh, we have to think about it. And then in the product backlog, those ones are tasks or features that we're gonna implement it. We have to implement it. So we organize by putting the first one in order for from priority to do next. So in that way, everyone knows which one we have to do. 
And then every month we separate in two sprints or one sprint. And we put all we're going to do in this month in here. And then, so we are at the end of the month. So we only have a couple of things to do. So we are a group of people. So whenever someone wants to do something, they take this task and they move it here. I'm not going to do it because otherwise all my <laughs> landmates will ask me, why did, are you doing this one now? <laughs> uh, so you move it there. So you let everyone know that you're working on that feature and then you assign yourself like this. You can assign yourself. And that's it. It works. And by the time that you finish, you put it here and then someone review it with a pull request. It's actually integrated. And then you have these nice reports. So let's go to another milestone. <laughs> I mean, this month was very tough and not tough. It was kind of vacation. So yeah, like this one. So we got all this time to do this. And then we finish many, many features at a time. So you got to know time and how many. So, well, every, every task we assign some story points, which means how high is to do it. So by those story points, they build this Y axis and then over time it, it deducts. So you get the idea of how many story points you already, cons you already did it. So it's a performance graph. It's a performance metric. And it's totally useful. And this velocity tracking, I'm not much, I mean, it's, I'm not sure if it's useful much. But well, yeah, it can show like uh, which sprint the team work a lot, which one they don't work much. But well, so that's it. It's very simple right there, nothing more. One more thing to say it's uh, integrated with uh, Slack. So if we go there, we can see how I throw a method, message whenever we change it. Check the time. 42, OK. And so up, up, up. <laughs> yeah, here is it. So I say, yeah, Vicente Adolfo reprioritize this task and move it up and then he move it. Well, so you get the idea, it's integrated. So people know in this Slack, everyone get notification to their phone. Okay, this guy did this one. So everyone know what's going on at any time, which is great. Communication is actually very important in the team. So that's all for our Zend Hub thing. And now let's move to the last two, but not the least important. So Travis, so the idea of Travis is like, uh, there, well, the main idea that the main idea people use it is to, whenever they do a pull request, then somehow GitHub makes some test and tells you, oh, your call compiles pass the pass the test so it's ready to merge so then it's some kind of like a magic tool so before i learned how to use it i really thought it was a magic tool because i didn't know how it can be that much automatized so the idea is that uh, what i like the most if i'm working with people is like a Someone makes some feature and then it looks a little bit not good. But with this tool, I know whether it's actually breaks the code or then whether it compiles and passes the test. And I don't have to do it by myself. It's automatically done. And it's nice. And if it doesn't pass the test, then you cannot merge the pull request. And then the last part, you can deploy your code for example, in a website, if you pass the test, your web app, then you directly um, upgrade your web app to 
whatever version you have in GitHub. So it's very nice, right? It's like as long as you merge in GitHub, you wait three or four minutes, and then now the real website already upgraded to whatever you have changed. And that that thing is called continuous in, uh, integration, and it's a great workflow for certain kind of projects, which uh, I mean, it's the maximum, the most flexible workflow you will ever get. There is no release, releases continuously. But well, we will talk about this very thing for a whole seminar. So, so yeah, uh, this Travis. So let's go to this uh, this one, the DFS. So for everyone who is curious about this one, it's a distributed file system. Uh, we made it for a long time. We have some research papers about this one. And well, it's a nice tool. Check it out. So we always use pull request here. And yeah, we can see. Him. So I said, so well, this one, it was only documentation. So this one, the bug 94, <laughs> one more time. So we can see the last commit here, and then it get this tick. So it's mean that before I merge it, it checks. So if I click, I get to this Travis. And I get good. I pass it in screen. And I get all the job that it has been done. So I configure my projects. It's compile. It install. And then I check the test. And then if everything is fine, then you can merge it. So how to use this one? So well, you need to sign up. And then in your projects, you have to write this small script called Travis, that's YML. And in here, so well, I have many options. I To make it fast, mostly not, notify Slack. So it was mostly to make it fast. So before maybe like a 10 minutes, 12 minutes. So it's kind of slow. We work fast. So I say, okay, it should be within two minutes. And then, yeah, I, I configure that way and then it works here. So basically that's what it does. So it, it download your code from your pull request. It executes those comments. This one, this one, this one. So if any of those comments fails, returns a non-zero value, a standard in Unix systems, then you will not get a tick. You will get a cross. And then you need to fix it in your code. So that all these comments that you write here, they all should throw a return value of zero. So how is, that's how it works. Everything else is install dependencies, just like this. If you want to add package from APT, you from uh, APT repositories, which are not official, you throw it here, and then the names, and distribution, programming language, if you say like this, you will use a docket, Docker, which is actually much faster and more efficient. And yeah, use it. <laughs> There's no reason not to use it. And yeah, that's it. That that's that's it pretty much. Uh, for more more details, please leave me a comment. And if I see some feedback, I will know what to do next. So anyways, uh, this is the end of the presentation. And in the next presentation, we will talk about Agile. So this time, in these two presentations, we talk about tools. But in the next one, we're going to talk about more theory and more about workflow. It will be good. Don't miss it.